Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Today I'm going to be working on my pomegranate and my Japanese black pine. I'm going to begin with the Japanese black pine. Last year I did two cuts on it. I cut off these two lower bottom branches. It was hard to water with these bottom branches sticking out and I didn't want branches that low on the trunk line anyway. Since then, uh, I've got two new shoots that have developed around that branch I cut off. You can see it there. The other stub, it didn't do anything. It just bled a bit. So that's it. So last year, I had some strong, three strong buds up top here. And you can see they grew over the summer and developed into quite large branches. And now at the top of the leader here, I have one big central bud and three smaller buds surrounding it. Very strong. On this branch off to this left side, I have one strong central bud and another bud off to the one side. And the other branch, a strong central bud. And again, one more bud off to the one side. So yeah, they're ready to go for spring. Uh, you can see how much vigor the tree's gaining. So the first year it put on this growth, second year here, and the third year spectacular growth. It's just taking off as that root system develops in the soil. I mentioned in the video last year that I wanted to grow this as a, a fairly large tree, not a small Japanese black pine. So I've got to decide this year what to do with the pruning, what to take off, and what to keep. Last year, as an April Fool's joke, I wired the one needle on this pine into a twisty looking shape. Let's unwire it now and just see if the needle held its shape. I I'll be interested. Here's a close up of that twisty needle that was wired into that flowing S shape pattern. So I guess the moral of this is if you want to wire your needles into curvy shapes, you can do it and they'll hold their shape. The other moral of this story is please do not wire your needles on your pines. That's just ridiculous. Don't ever do it. <laughs> I was looking at my black pine here and trying to think, what do I want to do with it? What kind of style do I want? Or what do I want this tree to look like? And I was thinking one of the most difficult styles to create in bonsai is a what they call a formal upright style where you have a vertical trunk, taper to the trunk and nicely placed branches. So I thought, well, I'm going to challenge myself to try and achieve that style with this tree. So I'm going for a formal upright style, a vertical trunk with taper and good branching. I'm also going to try and achieve this formal upright style using clip and grow no wiring. The branches on pines in nature grow in whorls, so they're like steps on a ladder. You'll get one whirl of branches, like a radial set of branches at one level, then there's a space, and then you'll get another set of radial branches at another level, a space, and so on up the tree. So they, they grow in these spoke patterns. That's fine in a full-size tree because all the vigor is going up the trunk to the apex, and these lower branches stay kind of thin and they don't cause swelling on the trunk of the tree. In a bonsai, if you have too many branches coming from one spot, it creates an ugly bulge in the trunk and it can really spoil the look of the tree. So in bonsai, we try and have staggered branches. So I'll have like a right branch, a space, a left branch, space, back branch, space. So the branches are staggered. The overall look is like, you know, a typical pine, but it doesn't have those problem areas where you have multiple branches coming from one spot and you get your trunk swelling. On this tree, I have, I've got my two main lower branches here, but underneath you can see there's a couple of branches that have developed there on the trunk line. There's also one at the back here, you can see has developed so I have a good choice of branches in this area. I don't need these two opposite branches here. I can keep one and maybe take one of them off. So generally on bonsai, 
You always want to keep your skinniest branch. You want your trunk to develop nice and thick and keep your branches thin. You don't want your branches like up here where they're almost the same diameter as the trunk. So if I was to take one of these two branches off, I would prune off the thicker one and keep my skinnier branch. So let's do that. Let's take off this branch and begin the pruning. This branch I'm removing has a lot of needles back at the base of the branch. So if I were to prune it right here, and I'll do it like that, I would get all kinds of back budding on that branch. But in this case, I don't even want to keep that branch. I don't want my two opposite branches here. So I'm taking this branch right off. So I'll prune it flush with the trunk like that. And then I'll come in and clean that cut up. So I'll just come in here and prune it flush. Now this trunk will grow a lot in the future, so it doesn't have to be, you know, absolutely flush or concave. That'll heal over nicely, and as the tree grows and thickens, that scar will become invisible. I've removed that one major thick branch there now, so I'm looking at the remaining branches in this area, and they're kind of a whirl. I've got the one out the front, one to the left, and one to the right, and that's it. So I've got those three lower branches and then the thicker one higher up to the left. So I've got to decide what do I want to keep on this tree. If I use this branch and this lower one as my, you know, staggering, I think as this tree matures, they're still going to look like they're coming from the same level. There's not enough height variation between this lowest branch and this upper one to to make a nice staggered branching on the tree. So I think in this case, I'll just keep one branch in this area as my lowest branch and all the others will get pruned off. I have to decide which of these four branches down in this kind of whorl do I want to keep? It's a good question. And maybe I have to look up higher to my next level. So if I were to keep this one, I would have to have a staggered branch, so I'd have to keep this one or develop a new one. I'm thinking that these two upper branches are too thick. You can see that this branch is pretty well the same diameter as the trunk, so they're too vigorous. I would have to, I could either prune them back, sh back short and develop branches off here, which is still make it too thick. So I think my only option is to remove both of these branches and develop new branches to get my staggering. So. I think that's what I'll do. So I still have to decide what to do down low. Which branch do I want to keep? Um, as I said before, generally I want to keep my thinnest branches because I don't want these lower branches thickening up and becoming like this branch where it's too thick compared to the trunk. So if I keep my little weak branches down here and maybe prune off my more vigorous one, I'll set the tree up for the next stage of its uh, development. And I, I think I'll do that. I, I think I've got to get rid of also this thicker one up here. So here I go. This branch is coming off also with a flush cut. Like that. So that is now gone. So you can see I've kept my little branches down below. And I think I'll keep all of them for now. So my next step, I want to get rid of these two upper branches. All my vigor is going to go in the apex here. It's just going to get taller and taller. I mean, I will get branching here because there's there's four buds here. Three, uh, three sort of secondary buds and my primary one at the branch tip. So this is just going to rock it up, thicken everything, and hopefully I'll get some more branching just like I did here. Especially after some pruning, usually you get some back budding on the trunk. So my next step is to take off these two branches. So here I go removing these two branches. Now there's many strategies you can use on pines to develop the trees. This is just one possible approach. So I'm going to leave a stub for dieback. So here I go pruning this branch off. Gone. And this branch is coming off also. Gone. These two branches will be cleaned up uh, later on as the tree you know reroutes all its plumbing 
and I'll probably get a ton of new branches in this area here. By removing all these, you know, fairly thick branches in this area, all my energy for the tree is now going to go into growing the top of the tree. So it's going to get very, very tall this year. Eventually, you know, I'll be pruning it back, creating a new leader for taper. I'm going to try and keep it straight. There is a slight movement in it, but I'm not going to worry about that. Um, you know, a true formal upright would be absolutely straight, but I guess mine might be more of a in between an informal upright that has a bit of movement in the trunk uh, in between that and a formal upright because you know I'm not going to use any wiring so I will get some subtle movement but generally this kind of subtle movement as the trunk thickens up it becomes less noticeable it, it, it'll sort of straighten the tree up that's what I found on pines is they they like to grow nice and straight these cut points are generally quite resiny so I don't really need to seal them, but I will. I'll seal them with my rubber cement. Down lower on the trunk here are the cuts that I made last year. And I can clean these up now because they've dried up and the plumbing has all been rerouted. So I'll make a flush cut here like that. On the other side of the trunk here, I have these new little branches, but again, they're too low on the trunk. And if I develop them, I could get, you know, more taper maybe in my trunk but they're going to leave scars and I don't want a trunk full of scars on this pine. I want it to be, you know, very beautiful. So that one is going to come off also like that. And I'll also seal these cuts up with some rubber cement. The work I did today is just one of hundreds of possibilities of how you can style this pine. It's the method I chose and I hope it gives a nice tree in the future. So. We'll keep working on it. It's uh, exciting. This is a black pine developed from a seed and hopefully someday it'll become a nice bonsai. Before we leave the black pine, I'm just going to remove the moss that's growing up the trunk here. Now I will be repotting this tree this year. It's uh, gone two years since its last repot and you can see it's getting a nice flare at the trunk. And that's an important part of a formal upright tree is getting a nice radial root base. So I'll continue to work on the root base with the next repotting. I'll put the black pine away now and let's get out the pomegranate. Pomegranates are considered a temperate tree. If you cool them down in the winter time, they'll lose all their leaves and become bare like this one. Or if you keep them you know, a little warmer over the winter, they'll keep their leaves, they'll just stay dormant. What you don't want to do with the pomegranates is keep them warm throughout the winter. Don't treat them like a tropical tree, otherwise they'll slowly lose vigor and they might, they might perish. Um, if you want them to flower, be healthy, you've got to give them that rest period in the winter. I can see now that there's some new shoots growing on the tree. It kind of lost its leaves for the deep winter. And for some reason now it's waking up, I guess because the light is getting stronger outside. I do get some natural light into my basement uh, through the basement windows. So it must be reacting to the longer days and increased light levels. Here is a look at the tree and you can see the new shoots coming out on it here and here. And there's some down low here. But the top is all kind of just bare. There's a, the remains of a flower on it here or a fruit. I guess that was a fruit. So all these little branches, you know, they'll come back to life in spring. I bought this pomegranate at a nursery last year. I think it was like the middle of summer and I haven't done anything to it yet. I haven't done any repotting, root pruning, top pruning. I haven't done anything to the tree. So today I'm going to prune up the top of the tree. The first thing I want to do to the tree is prune these roots off the bottom. You can see the pot doesn't sit flat. So I've got to prune all these, this clump of roots off the bottom that were growing out of the drainage holes. Like that. So now the pot sits flat. It's not so tippy. I'm going to take a look at the structure of the tree for the first time, trying to pick out a front for the tree. So I'm just kind of rotating it around. You can see it's a 
sort of a double trunk. Uh, from the base of the tree, I have this branch that comes up and then the trunk line, and the two kind of flow with each other. It's quite graceful, actually. Off of that trunk, there's a few aerial roots growing down, which are also kind of unique. I'll show you those. So I'm coming in now, and hopefully you can see at the root base there that there's some aerial roots hanging off of that secondary trunk growing down into the soil level. Yeah, so an interesting shaped pomegranate. I think, you know, the double trunks on this tree are quite nice. They flow nicely together. Uh, so I think that's the style I should go with. Uh, I'll keep these double trunks. Uh, there is a third branch. If I look at the back here, it grows up and kind of snakes behind the, the main trunk of the tree. That isn't so nice looking, so I'm going to take that off my first step. Prune it here and there are some aerial roots from it there and that comes out like that. So that comes off. Now these do grow from cuttings. If I planted that I could probably get another pomegranate tree. There's also kind of a, a clump of branches at the base of the tree that I should take off if you see them down here. I don't want any branches that low on the trunk line, so they're coming off. I also should pull this weed out of here. Okay, so I've got, you know, it kind of cleaned up at the base here, at least a bit more. There's another branch here that's growing in between these other trunks. I don't want that, so I'm going to take that out too. And also cleaning up the basic structure down low. Another little branch here. Oh, that's just, it's just fallen down. Okay, so that's kind of got the base of the tree cleaned up. So I think the front of the tree would be somewhere here with this secondary trunk kind of slightly behind the primary one. Now I do have a branch coming straight out the front here and it's also very low. It's almost like a triple trunk here. So I'm going to remove these two, these lower branches. You can see there's another one at the back here. So they're coming off. Here I go. Like that and this one also. Again, cleaning up the base of the tree. So it has a trunk. Now on the secondary trunk, there's also another branch down low here. I'm, this one here, I'm going to take that one off. So here I go. Like that. So you can see I'm cleaning up this trunk line. Now I have, the trunk line comes up and then there's some fairly major branches up top here, here and here. And then I've got all these little spindly ones down below. I think I'm going to remove all these little spindly ones and have my branching start up higher on the tree. Because this tree will grow and I don't want my lowest branches like right down near the soil level. So all these little skinny branches are coming off. There's one here I gotta get rid of, one here. Okay, so that brings me up on the main trunk line here. There's another little branch here I get rid of. And here and here. It comes up to my first division here. Now, do I want it dividing here and then this one kind of crossing over in front of my secondary tree? I could, I, I could get rid of this part of the secondary branch and have it staying over this side and this one developing a canopy here. I think I'd be good. I, I don't like this vertical one coming off of the secondary trunk here. So I think that's got to be pruned back or pruned off. So off it comes like that. You can see this makes it this more of a, a secondary trunk. This one becomes more dominant. I'm going to clean that cut up there. Just kind of there, nice. Clean that up. 
So that kind of yeah, creates a bit of negative space here. Now you can see this, this branch is absolutely straight. So I can't have that. I, I've got to prune it back. Um, I can see there's some buds here, some here, here. So I want to go as short as possible because I don't want these big, long, straight branches. There's actually some down here too. So I think I'm going to take advantage of the ones nearest the trunk and then slowly, slowly grow the branch out so it's taper in movement. Um, these are the ones I want to, want to develop, the buds down here. There's another set of buds here. So I'm going to prune above the second set of buds right here. I have a safety now. If these lower buds don't develop, then, you know, if I'd prune back to these lower buds and the branch just died off, then I, I'd lose the branch. So I kind of have a safety here that, you know, I've got two sets of buds here. Hopefully one of these will grow into a, the future branch. I guess I'm saying that don't leave all your eggs in one basket. Don't rely on one bud on a branch to grow because it, it could die off and you lose the whole branch. So I'm going up the tree now. Um, I've got another major division here. So I, I don't think I want the one growing out front and I don't want the one opposite it. And again, you know, this one's growing very straight. I'm going to prune it off shorter to there, leaving a few branches here to develop. There's one on the inside here I can take out. Going up my trunk line. I have a major division up here. I can also, yeah, I think it might be time to end this trunk line and have it start to branch. Uh, I'm thinking about here, I've got these two branches here. The one is kind of growing out the back and would make a nice, I mean, it, there's lots of space for it to grow here. This one is kind of, it might grow over top of my other trunk. And I think it's kind of low, so I'm going to take this one off. Like that, and I'll clean that up. Like that. I think that's better to develop you know, this branch up higher, it, it looks like it fits better. Now, do I prune off the top of this trunk line here? Good question. The trunk has movement up until about here and then it goes kind of straight, but in the other view, it still has a bit of movement. It's very subtle, but it's there. Let me try the tip off. Maybe work my way down. I've got a crossing branch here. I'm going to remove off my secondary trunk. And I have one going out the back that's better. There's another one here that crosses this. You can see this branch comes up, it divides into two. I've got to keep, it makes an X here. I've got to keep one of these. I think I've got to remove the lower one. It's kind of running parallel. Clean that up a bit. Like that. This one's a, kind of on the inside of a curve, but it's not too bad. I'll just prune the tips off it. And I'm going to prune the tip off here. Maybe a little more. Prune this back, this back, this back more. I think that's pruned up quite nicely. Now, let me examine the structure here. So coming up, we've got this branch to the back. I can take this one out. It's kind of crossing. Um, I've got a horizontal branch here I can remove. One here. So here I've got a trident. I've got two branches each side and one up the middle. Do I take out the middle one? Have it subdivide? That was my question. Or remove this one, or this one. That have staggering this branch, this branch. Tough decision. I think I want to keep this branch for sure. So I'm going to remove this one. Shorten this one. Take this one out. 
It's coming straight out the front. Now this one could be my leader. I'd make a good leader. I think I will. I'm going to reduce the apex back to here. Like that. Take this one out. Well, I think, I think that's looking pretty good for basic pruning. It's certainly set up to grow for this next year. Now, this one I will also be repotting for the first time. Uh, who knows how deep this goes into the pot. It's probably a cutting that was, you know, stuck in the pot. Uh, it could have quite a long trunk before it divides here. It's something I'll find out in spring when I repot it. I'm going to mark the front of the tree, which I think is... That is flat on to these two trunks. I don't want it flat. If I rotate it, that's the side view. So maybe somewhere in between about here, I think. So I'll mark the front view here, which is right square on with the front of the pot. So that is marked. I'll show you a... Uh, 360 degree view of the tree now. So here's the front rotating around to the right hand side, right there, around to the back, around to the left hand side, and back to the front. Here is the Blue Jay Bonsai Carnage Cam. Everything I took off my trees today you know, for such small trees, I took off quite a bit. Here is an SNC fly-in, the black pine seedling, and the pomegranate. I've got my pomegranate and my black pine all pruned up. They're ready to grow once spring arrives. That is all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone. <music>